Guy McPherson here with Peter Miller from Canada for another in our series of short videos. Please refer to the video that was released on Monday, January 17th, that gives an overview of where we're headed here. This is item three of six on a list that came from Colorado University Boulder about dealing with mental health. Item three of six is practice compassion. Whenever we approach painful situations or emotions, it's important to do so with kindness and compassion for ourselves and for others. Might, might not be feasible for you to recycle everything all the time. And beating yourself up about relatively insignificant issues, like whether you recycled the plastic into the right container or not, is not a healthy way to spend your time. So first and foremost is your own mental health and giving yourself the opportunity to, to, to accept yourself for not being the world's most perfect, perfect human being. So, Peter, with that, mm -hmm. I turn mm -hmm. it over to you for actual wisdom. Well, I think ever since I came into your world initially and I read Going Dark, and I was just... I was so taken and fascinated by that book. And I reached out to you and started having conversations. Um, I think I immediately went into this kind of dissonance or tension of like, it's like this, um, you start feeling guilt and shame for being a human in the modern world. Kind of going like, I'm talking about this. It's important to me, but I'm also a perpetrator or so apparently, right? Mm -hmm. Seeming, seemingly, I'm a, I'm a perpetrator. Uh, I go along with everything I go along with the materialistic world. I buy all the products. I, I, I throw away. I throw away lots of trash, or a regular amount of trash, <laughs> probably a regular amount of trash. Um, and um, you know, I I I, I burn up gasoline. Mm -hmm. I, I emit emissions, right? And I, I do it all, right? <laughs> and so, right. and I mean, this is one of the things that people on the far right wing would use as you're just a hypocrite, right? You're, you're a hypocrite. You talk about well, the importance people of on the, the people on the far left wing would say the same thing. Oh, they right? you're not doing okay. enough. Absolutely. Oh, oh, you're not doing enough. Right. Okay. Sure. I hear, I hear from all sides, but uh, yeah, that became kind of a mental emotional dilemma for a while for me. Um, um, and yeah, I mean, I, I think until you've learned a lot more about how to, care for yourself and care for your emotions and your mental health it's hard to put things in a broader perspective and kind of recognize like okay i was born into this way of life it's all that i've ever known um i i i i think i might get really lost and confused trying to go in another direction uh living a different way because every, every even everybody I know lives this way. Everyone I have attachments with lives this way. Mm -hmm. So it would mean I would have to like probably leave my children behind. It would mean I would have to never, you know, not really interact very much with my extended family because they all live this way, right? Like, so yes, it is like concerning uh, that there are consequences to this way of life. Um, but it doesn't mean does it mean that because I'm enveloped in it and it's all I've ever known, does it mean that I'm a bad person, that I'm shameful um, and that I should be consumed with guilt for all of my daily actions? Of course. In fact, if you stop, then aerosol masking goes away. That's the that's, fastest way to human. <laughs> that's part of the big picture, too, that I think that uh, is really good for people to appreciate from what you know, what you bring into this discussion and have that others won't is the aerosol masking effect. Um, and so it is It is a strange kind of paradox. Like on the one hand, we're doing harm. On the other hand, we're preserving life. Like we're doing both. And that's, I mean, you really have to kind of think that through. And as you know, that took me a while to understand that. I was like, what? Like, it took me a while to understand that that idea. So it's like on the one hand you're saying it's not it's really not good that we've done this to ourselves. On the other hand, it's good that we're doing it to ourselves. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because you know you can feel disappointment because you haven't done enough. 
you can feel hurt because other people aren't doing enough. But does that help anything? I would argue, no, absolutely not. That you do what you can do and you just live with it. And other people do what they can do and you live with that too. I mean, we can't look around and blame everybody for them doing, living their lives differently than, than we do. And yes, industrial civilization is all we've ever known. And I mean, uh, even if we even if we go on a mission to reject it, and I know you did that by by trying to live a different life, mm -hmm. and and you, I think you had wished that there would be a lot of followers, and the reality was that there were not, right? Um, so e I mean, even if I was to do I do a guy McPherson and like go and live in the desert, right, or whatever, and and crap in a bucket, like no one would follow me. Or hardly any, hardly anybody, right? This is just, I mean, and I, I'm thinking of um, um, Byron Katie's book, "Loving What Is," when she, she basically guides people back to, you know, trying to love reality, like, and to kind of become okay that become okay with what the realities are, and even if they're, even if they're not ideal, if you can accept them, you can live a more sane and stable life. And if you can accept yourself for living how you live, I mm. think that's critically important and often misstated or understated. Mm. I was so disappointed because the world didn't follow along, right? I opted out of the monetary system. I stopped receiving paychecks. I loved my job. It was the perfect job, blah, blah, blah. And then I opted out and nobody followed, not even my wife my life partner of more than 35 years. And that was disappointing. <laughs> but I, I can't dwell on that. Mistakes have been made. And understandable. Uh, and I mean, I think you've done what all of us do. We, we do the best we can with what we know and what we have at the time. And sadly, I mean, we make errors as we do that. Um, it, but it doesn't mean that we're bad people because we make errors. We do the best that we often, I think most people, unless they're really psychopathic, which most people aren't, they really just do the best that they can with what they know, what they have at the time. And and that's why a lot of parents, you know, young parents, they, they make tons of mistakes. And I did too, because you go, you just go with what you know. <laughs> and it's often, it's often insufficient. Um, And I was also going to just kind of add in here, like sometimes when I talk to people in therapy, like I talk about, is that the right emotion to apply to this situation? Like, does it make sense for me to feel a ton of shame? Like, am I a bad, because like, shame means you're saying I'm a bad human, I'm a bad person, right? Mm -hmm. Is it, does it make, is it fitting for me to say I'm a bad human for living like this, even though it's all I've ever known, and to do otherwise would be futile, right? Like, is it, it's not really a fitting emotion. A more fitting emotion would be, it's kind of, it's sad that we're, you know, the the only the only thing that really kind of makes sense is to kind of keep going along in a, in a way. Mm -hmm. It's it's sad because there's consequences to it, but it doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. But right. it is it. But it's but it, so you see, you replace shame with sadness, uh, and or you know maybe just kind of disappointment in the direction that the the collective has taken. It's disappointing because right. because it, there's a lot of harmfulness to it. But it is what it is. That's what the collective is doing. And there's lots of people who are have way more power than me <laughs> in government and systems who, who call the shots. I don't call the shots. Right, right. right. In, in fact, this, this section of this report put up by Colorado University in Boulder finishes with three bullet points. One, it's okay to feel stressed about climate change. Of course it is, because it poses an existential threat. And... You don't have to watch the news every day. You have to watch the news once every six months and you realize that other people are losing habitat. Other people are dying as a result of climate change. Two, I can make a difference and big changes are going to take time. Or number two, subsection A, I can't make a difference. Hmm. Maybe I can make a difference, but maybe I can't make a difference that really matters because we got more than 8 billion people pointed in one direction and mm -hmm. swimming up that stream is going to be a little bit challenging. 
And three, I can take a break. This issue is important to me, and so is my mental well-being. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is critically important because if you check out mentally or otherwise, you're no help to anybody, including yourself. Yeah. If you ha don't have your health, you don't have anything. That's what I was. That's what I was taught as from my my father, and I, I continue to abide by that principle. Um, right. So, and that's, um, health that's, and well being and self care is vital, and uh, that applies to mental health as well. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Uh, no, and physical exercise does not make up for mental health. <laughs> if you <laughs> if you there you need to engage in other practices to maintain your mental health, not just lifting weights or running on the treadmill. That is not enough. I'm just going to put that out there as a little aside. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So no more treadmill for me. That's what you're saying. Well, it's it's <laughs> hard, it's it's helpful, but it doesn't actually he heal the mind in a, in a complete way. No way. <laughs> I understand. I was just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so a little bit about freebpdcourse.com. Can you wrap us up with that? Yep, you betcha. Uh, find my free course, uh, the free BPD course, at freebpdcourse.com, uh, where you can learn everything I've learned in my life about uh, how to manage some of the most common uh, mental health concerns, that being uh, ways people get stuck in uh, anxiety uh, disorder, ways people get, get stuck in depressed mood, how it um, can link to behavioral issues and interpersonal issues in the realm of personality, uh, which is what um, basically the, the essence of borderline personality. You're having trouble in regulating emotions, managing thoughts, and dealing with impulsive behavior. Although those things uh, combined can create quite the, call you could call it the perfect storm, <laughs> Uh, where you have, you know, uh, different things that are unmanaged combining into this kind of this big, terrible mess. Uh, but it's entirely understandable and treatable. And um, even if you don't suffer from it, you would be doing good to, this, to, the, to people uh, in society and the people around you by learning about it, because there's a very good chance uh, someone in your family or someone in your friendships or someone that you'll encounter will be suffering in this kind of way and if you understand what it's all about you can provide responses during interaction that are um compassionate and supportive so yeah i'd encourage everybody to learn about it it's not just for people suffering <laughs> because a lot of it, mental illness happens in the interpersonal context mm -hmm. um and that's that's a kind of a that's a big insight actually to know that Excellent. Thank you, Peter. Again, freebpt, freebpdcourse.com is where you can find this important information.